for the match. Uh, they are playing the two characters we did expect. Yeah. So the thing about Belmonts is that it's all about adaptation. That the Belmont is going to come in with a game plan of how am I going to wall out the opponent? And then, depending on how that works, they then have to adapt. It becomes an arms race of adaptation. Because the Belmonts have so many, they always have like an answer to a specific thing. But they don't have an answer to everything. Mm -hmm. Like, speaking of answers of specific things, like, especially in this matchup, um, I think he might, he'll he'll have answers to Rob's projectile game, where a lot of characters really don't. Um, but as we're seeing right now, you have Mr. Chef all over him, and pushing him to the corner, and like Belmont in this scenario, him being pushed to the corner like that is not good, especially against a character like Rob. Um, but he's fighting his way at the corner, now he has Rob at the ledge. Now, we know also, Belmonts in general, they do have experience with item control. You don't necessarily see it all the time, but when Holy Water it bounces off, they can grab it. So I wonder, if, I've seen him go for the gyro a few times. Yeah, let's see if he can do anything creative off of this. All right, just throws it on, Z drops it onto the ground, makes it his for a little while. So there's one thing that um, Amon's Grace did do when, yeah, when Mr. Chef was coming back. He tried to forward smash him at, at the top platform from PS2 to catch him slipping, but um, Chef actually caught him slipping with the forward smash on the roll-in. And a lot of people get caught by that. Like, I don't think they, for some reason, they expect the inside hitbox to hit like that. Now, also, one thing about this matchup is that Rob has the option of recovering high. Yeah. Which means that if he wants to, he can just never go to ledge. He can never have to deal with all of Belmont's shenanigans of, like, holy water at the ledge into F smash. He, granted, recovering high has its own risks, but it's... It feels like it's much less risky of just dying at crazy low percents to the point where we're probably going to be seeing a lot of high recoveries in this set. And it's going to be curious how Ominous Grace is going to adapt to that inevitability. Yeah, and um, the thing about it is it's like he's, you have to deal with Rob landing on you at some point, right? He's going to land on you in there. And it just seems like right now Ominous Grace isn't doing too well with him landing on him in there. Especially when he has a button like Up B, which like, even though that Nair is, you know, zero on shield, right? Sometimes you have to throw out, you have to take a little bit of risk to get Rob off of you. Actually, the thing he just did to counter that Nair, run back an F-Tilt. Because F-Tilt has so much range Ooh, that that should be the death of it, yeah. Uh, F-Tilt has so much range that you could definitely just punish whips with it. That, oh, what a good roll. Yeah, because that might have broken the shield. Ooh, I'll smash whiffs. Yeah, good up B, just get him off him. And now, even though, um, like you said, Rob with with st like stalling in the air like that, got back to the ground like fairly easily. And like th like just one of the things that Ominous Grace isn't doing particularly well is that once he has Chef in the corner, he's never a hard time holding him there, right? He's doing a lot of preemptive attacks and stuff like holding his ground, and he's doing a lot of a lot of preempting like the up B. I mean, I feel like those uppies are trying to preempt the aggressive options out of the corner, like that forward air we just saw, which Chef is doing quite a bit of. Oh, off stage once again. I love the uppie, making sure that hitbox pokes above the ledge. But can he take this stock? If he manages to take a stock here, Belmonts can sometimes just do nutty things in an instant. So it's not out of it as long as, oh, would that be it? Great neutral air to counter attack. And now, once again, Chef is in control. Yeah, and the stall that you talked about, Chef is really abusing that. And um, it seems like his Amon's Grace is having a hard time calling out some of these recovery options. And he rolled right into that, and he didn't die. Yeah, that side B has great base knockback, but its knockback growth is somewhat questionable. Let's see if he'll get the follow-up. He does up air. Going to be taking at Chef winning game one with what ended up being a two-stop. Yeah, and didn't really have to go for the up smash in that situation. Got a, had him at 140, right? Instead of going for the up smash on him, maybe mashing out really fast. He just went for the sure thing, right? Scooping him up from the ground also. Um, yeah, and Chef, like, prim, like in firm control. Like, one of the things was uh, he made it hard for him to get pinned down at the edge, right? And both these characters excel at pinning you down at the ledge and just exploiting whatever recovery you're going to try to do. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty, that was pretty much the first game. Now, another thing that we didn't, I believe we didn't see, is Ominous Grace with a stock lead. Yeah, because no, no, no. if... All he needs to do is, <laughs> like, the Belmonts with a stock lead is maybe one of the most frustrating, difficult things to deal with. So, this time around, if Ominous Grace manages to get a strong start, we could see a completely, just a total turnaround from the last game. And already, um, Ominous Grace already starting out with up. He had a shield, something that he seldom used in the first game. Maybe we're going to see a little bit more of that to try to get Rob off him. 
create a little bit more space for himself because right now he's having a hard time just getting away from Mr. Chef right now and he's all over him mixing up with the landing there. Oh, that cross is coming. What a great robo beam. Ends up basically alleviating all of the pressure that Mr. Chef was feeling in the corner. And once again, he gets through it. Rob is such a big body. Mm -hmm. Normally, he's not a hard character to, uh, you know, wall out, to pin down. But the movement, just carefully choosing where he approaches to get off the ledge. And that he should does. be it. Yeah, I think he actually took his jump as well. And honestly, it just boils down to impatience. And it's just, I think Grace is trying to just get the strong punish as hard as he can. And not really waiting out Rob. Because Rob, he... The only button he really has to land is Nair, right? So if you're going to hold your ground, you can kind of hold your ground away from to press that button. Because you kind of know what to expect, right? That's your oh. poke. <laughs> I think he dropped shield. Okay. I think maybe he was looking for a parry or something, but regardless, that's going to be a stock taken, which is, if you're Ominous Grace, you get to breathe a little bit mm -hmm. easily yeah. because you don't, you know, last time around we saw he just wasn't able to take a stock once uh, Mr. Yeah. Chef got a solid lead in. And right now, you know, he's ha he's holding a little bit of the corner pressure, racked on a quick 30%. Uh, it seems like now he's finding a little bit of success having Rob, Rob above him, but he's not having a lot of success landing on Rob, which is... Now, keep in mind, this was Ominous Grace's counter pick, and I think that Mr. Chef is doing a much better job of utilizing the stage to his advantage. We're seeing that when he's in the corner, he'll just go super high and then land on those platforms because by the nature of Belmont's character, he can't really limit options when people are coming down the same way that he can when people are trying to come at him from the side. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and he's having a hard time dealing with Rob up tilt. It, so, like, usually when you get hit, hit with Rob up tilt like that, right, you could try to jump away, but what he's trying to do, he's trying to run off the platform, and that's kind of hard to do, especially when like, Rob's hitting your shield like that, you're kind of in shield stun. That was so good. He landed with, he re-grabbed the ledge without right. invincibility. Right. I actually didn't think he was going to get there for a punish, but Belmont forward smash, yeah, that would reach from halfway across the universe. Yeah, it's almost like Ivysaur forward smash, because like in a way where you look at it, um, it doesn't seem like it's going to hit you below the ledge, even though you can angle it down. That, that's the big part about it, though. Yeah, yeah. but I think even, even like, straight angle, you can hit below the ledge. It's, like, really weird. Um, and now we actually have a dead even game. It seemed like Mr. Chef just had complete control, but that one pivotal mistake of going off stage and having to re-grab might actually cost him this game, too, because that's actually Ominous Grace has the lead right now. He has the percent lead, which means that if he really yeah. wants to, he can play to the timer. Yeah, and one thing that um, Mr. Chef has been doing pretty well on the whole time, he's been pun punishing forward tilt on his shield really hard. Every single time, he's been getting a ferret at his shield. And a lot of characters, when they get hit with um, his forward tilt, they kind of freeze up. Oh, did you press a button immediately? Yeah, he must have. Yo? Yo? What? He's oh, just okay. disconnecting his Yo? toy cons. Oh, Yo? a true gentleman. Yo? <laughs> Yo? Listen, le I learn like from example, kids. I, I, this is what you do. I feel oh. like I, oh, yep. Let's go. I feel like I've only ever seen that happen in like Mortal Kombat. Like you can't quit out, so you just like press the home home button and then you like 